I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Keto Elevate. As you guys know, over the age of 20, your metabolism starts slowing down, but you can help combat this by doing some healthy eating and regular exercise. This is something that I have adopted myself. But within also doing this, I also like to enjoy a carb or two or three or four. And so what helps me manage my weight and to supercharge my ketones with fat burning and weight loss, I like to take Keto Elevate. If you want an easier time managing your weight, you'll love taking this amazing keto powder. Get up to 51% off for the next 24 hours by going to ketowithnatalie.com or visiting the link down below. Muchachos y muchachas, so I just made a video about the initial conflicting police narratives that people were questioning within the community, people making assessments. And then I also included in that video because it was breaking news uh, right when I was editing that a Texas DPS regional director, Victor Escalone, confirmed everybody's suspicion that the police narrative was conflicting because initially it was uh, told uh, to a reporter that there were immediate resources that engaged in uh, taking down Salvador Ramos as he was on his shooting rampage inside of Robb Elementary. Now this is not so. So we'll take it to the Daily Mail where they're reporting uh, this with the, included with some uh, timeline breakdown, which is very helpful in this instance. Uh, but this is what they're reporting that there were no armed guards on campus when the gunman walked through an unlocked door with his AR-15. First responders on the scene retreated when he opened fire on them and waited for an hour for SWAT team. Now, the thing is like, I know as hard as this situation is, I could imagine that there are logistics that they were working on that they and, and um, Victor Escalone does mention that in his uh, news conference. But at the same time, I don't understand why it would be told to the public that there was immediate engagement when that was not true. So this is what it reads. Texas cops have revealed that there was no armed guard on campus when the gunman arrived on uh, Tuesday, which allowed him to walk unobstructed through an unlocked door and into the building where he slaughtered 21 people. Uh, so this press conference just happened a couple hours ago. And it's, uh, Vic, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Victor Escalone, who is the original director of a Department of Public Safety, said that Salvador Ramos walked through an unlocked door unobstructed and that there was no guard readily available. And then uh, it continues here. It, contradict, it contradicts earlier reports that he fired at a school resource officer. Ramos entered the school at 11.40 a.m., 12 minutes after crashing his truck outside the school and walking towards campus with his AR-15. That is when police were alerted to the scene. At 11.44 a.m., the first cops entered the school. Ramos shot at them and they retreated. It's unclear if he had already shot the kids and the teachers in the fourth grade classroom by then or if he went on to attack them after those cops retreated. It then took an hour for specialized SWAT teams to arrive at 1.06 p.m. The incident was declared over after Ramos was shot dead. In the meantime, 150 cops were gathering outside. And you guys, uh, if you saw my previous video, I included that at the intro, so you guys have that perspective. But there were many cops that were outside barricading the entry from parents um, entering the school or getting within the area of uh, a parameter of the school where their children were inside. And you could see in that video that even some parents were pinned down. Um, given the, the, the atmospheric, given the atmospheric uh, um, uh, sentiments at the time, I would imagine that these parents were absolutely in chaos, trying to uh, think of something that they could do when they're helpless, being told that they can't attend to their children. So there's a lot of criticism to this going around now. He walked into an unobstructed initially. Uh, he was not confronted by anybody. Four minutes later, law enforcement are coming in to solve the problem, Escalone said. 
When the first cops entered the building, he fired at them, injuring at least two of them. The cops then retreated, leaving him to carry on with his killing. They hear gunfire, they make rounds, get back to take cover. They don't make the entry initially because of the gunfire they're receiving. They're calling for additional resources, tactical arms. We needed body armor, precision rifles, negotiators. And he does state this. Uh, this is the part that he states in the press conference of why it took 40 minutes up to an hour for officers or resources to invade the school and take down the shooter. And this is what is given as of right now that the reason for that was number one he also he also stated that there was a distance for resources uh in the surrounding counties of uvalde you also have eagle pass you have del rio um, and many other little towns and so this was also what he was alluding to, that there were other resources coming from other towns. Now, the thing about this and why this is receiving criticism is because there were 150 cops that were armed outside. Um, now, continuing on, it says they hear gunfire, they uh, take rounds, they get back and take over. They don't want to make the entry initially because of the gunfire they are receiving. They're calling for additional resources, tactical teams, and they needed body armor, precision rifles, negotiators. They're also evacuating students. There's a lot going on, he said. It's unclear if there was meant to be a resource officer at the school that day. There are four in the district that are at nine schools, including four elementary schools, a junior high and a high school. So uh, in uh, that press conference, Victor Escalone, the officer who was addressing the press, he claimed that most of the shooting occurred earlier off in the standoff and that only shots fired once cops were there to keep them at bay. Um, so the, the big question now is that why did it take so long? And again, it, for me, this is conflicting because they're saying that they need shields, they need negotiators, they need precision shooters, you know, things like that. Um, but while there are 150 officers right outside, Javier Casares, uh, whose nine-year-old daughter was murdered, says cops were just standing there and waiting for protective shields to arrive at the uh, scene before they went in. And they said they rushed in and all that, and we didn't see that, he told the New York Times, adding that many were just standing there. So again, a, pol a police narrative now also conflicting because there were, um, I, I stated in my last video that the Texas director I believe his name is Steve McGraw. He made the statement that the uh, officers there were immediately engaging with the shooter and this parent who was on scene and he was one of the ones who uh, was, you know, an, an outcry for parents to be able to go rush to the school. He said that they did not rush in at all. We didn't see that conflicting with the police narrative. And you can see a still here of the police officers um, pinning down a parent and pushing parents back from entering the school. Um, and the thing that I can say about this, you can see all of these parents uh, in anguish, wanting to just be there, attend their children, and the cops just uh, holding them down, not being able to go in. Uh, this is actually the woman that I talked to, the parent that I talked to at the Civic Center. Uh, she uh, was there with her husband awaiting information on her child and her nephew. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was uh, later learned that her child did not make it, neither did her nephew. Um, but you can see her there. Uh, she went from the school, wouldn't let her in. She probably went to the, they, they told me that they went to the hospital, um, what they were instructed to do, and then they were then instructed to go to the uh, De Leon Civic Center, which they were doing re, uh, unif um, reuniting services there. So uh, going further down, there are plenty of men out there that uh, were armed to the teeth that could have gone in t faster. This could have been over in a couple minutes, he said. He added that the police officer, uh, I'm sorry, that the police were faster to escape Beto O'Rourke from the press conference yesterday when he started heckling Governor Abbott than they were uh, when they were trying to get uh, into the school. And this is true. I mean, uh, and get, again, this is different scenarios, but when there are children in this instance, you would think think um, that there would be an immediate rush to the scene. But again, I am not a law enforcement officer. I don't know the uh, planning strategies of something to this detriment. Um, but I can tell you that this is what parents are especially frustrated with at, at, in the Uvalde area.
Angel Garza, whose daughter was killed and handcuffed after trying to, um, I'm sorry, uh, his daughter was killed. He was handcuffed after trying to run into the school when he heard that a girl called Amory had been shot. He later found out that she was among those who died while giving medical aid to other children who escaped. Derek Sotelo, 26, who works at a tire shop nearby, said parents were begging to be let into the school. They were just angry, especially the dads. We were wondering what the heck is going on. Are they going to let us in? The dads were saying, give me the vest. I'll go in there. Uh, frustrated parents were standing outside the school begging cops to go inside when the shooting was unfolding. Javier Cazares, whose nine-year-old daughter was murdered, says cops were just standing there waiting for protective shields. Um, they said they, they rushed in and that was not true, according to him. Um, so with this being said, one child uh, told KENS5 that uh, he was able to hide under a desk, but that a girl who yelled help when police arrived was executed by Salvador Ramos. Um, so this is the account of a fourth grader, a fourth grader who survived the mass shooting of the Robb Elementary School, was uh, shared a gut-wrenching details about what he witnessed inside the classroom. He shot the next person's door. We have a door in the middle. He opened it. He came in and he crouched a little and he said, it's time to die, the boy recalled. Authorities said that the suspect barricaded himself inside a classroom and opened fire in the people with the people inside, killing 19 children and two teachers before he was killed by law enforcement. When I heard that the shooting through the was through the door I told my friend to hide under something so he won't find us he said I was hiding hard and I was telling my friend not to talk because he's going to hear us the boy and four others hid under a table and had a tablecloth over it which may have shielded them from the sh shooters view and saved their lives the boy shared the heartbreaking details about what happened in that room when the cops came the cops said yell if you need help and one of the persons in my class said help the guy overheard and he came in and shot her the boy said the cop barged into that classroom the guy shot at the cop and the cop started shooting he said that once the shooting stopped he came out from under the table just opened the curtain and just put the hand out and said i got i got out with my friend i knew it was police i saw the armor and the shield he said that the teachers, Irma Garcia, Eva Morales, saved their lives. They were nice teachers. He said they went in front of my classmates to help to save them. The boy said that it made him feel better hugging his family and telling them about his feelings. He spoke with a counselor that said a highlight was seeing his friend who also survived. I would like to say to every kid and parent to be safe, he said. So this is, uh, again, so disheartening that the police narratives uh, can't line up and that you know we're left with more questions than answers uh, but of course like I said I will continue to keep tabs on this uh, and I do have another video um, coming out uh, actually a few that I, I want to plan to do uh, with some other new footage so with that being said please subscribe uh, please put on the notification bell if you uh, want to keep yourself notified about this news and uh, share this channel with somebody who would be interested to know uh, some play-by-play uh, -play news headlines that give either uh, some new light to the information that was fed to us or um, that clarifies something new in detail. So with that being said, guys, I love you. Thank you so much for your support. I'll catch you in the next one.